Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Better as we try to make a push towards the playoff post um, All Star break. Uh, this is from Nick's Muse. It says Bleacher Report predicts the Knicks to trade for OG and Anobi this trade deadline in exchange for two first Obi Toppin and Evan Fournier. Now, I did discuss a potential OG and Anobi trade because there were reports from Ian Bagley saying that the Knicks were in pursuit of OG to try to add him to the squad. And me, the only way I would go after a guy like OG is if we could do it for a reasonable deal, which would be, you know, Obi. One unprotected first and one protected first that's the only way you can get me at the negotiating table anything outside of that i think would be way too much to include for a guy like og and anobi foxy what would your thoughts on this trade be uh if it were to go through uh could you bring up his contract og's uh, contract yeah give me one second yeah hey folks um this is the big thing i don't know if anybody's really talked about this but, uh, you know, we put our GM hats on here. Um, we would trade all of these things. You know, they had two first, you know, all these players for a one-year rental. This is a clutch guy, by the way. So, you know, he has a player option in 24-25. So you, you're basically going to give all those assets for a year and a half and have him potentially walk. Yo, that's a dangerous. We just talk about Kyrie that being dangerous. This is the same type of thing, folks. You know, uh, he is a player option in 24-25. So uh, that's 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 a dangerous move for us uh, to make. Either we make this trade and he does a sign and trade where he signs an extension and then we have him under contract for X amount of years. But if we don't do that, you know, a clutch in one year, I could see him walking in a year and a half. And then and we gave up all those assets for nothing. Yeah, Clutch is already not too fond of uh, this front office, them being heavily CAA affiliated. Because one, you have the Cam Reddish situation. He's Clutch. They got him parked on the bench and can't find a way to get him to a place um, that can that would play him. And two, if I'm not mistaken, there's still some bad feelings with the Nerlens Noel uh, situation. Um, with Nerlens Noel, he was with Clutch, and it seems like the front office kind of persuaded him to leave Clutch sign with CAA and then proceed to sue Clutch. So there's a little bit of beef, I think, brewing between Clutch and CAA. Um, so with him being a Clutch client, that could complicate things if we do trade for him and try to extend him to a long-term deal. Also, you've got some of the injury history with um, OG. I think right now he's out due to an injury, which Wrist. of course is, you know, not 100% confirmed because it seems like Nick Nurse doesn't understand why he won't be available for their um, away trip. But, um, you know, with that injury history, there's some more concern. But in terms of what he can do for a team, I think he can definitely help benefit this team out there on the wing. We've talked about how we need a guy that can fit um, alongside RJ. If we can move RJ back down to the two and you look at OG, his length, uh, the ability to knock down the three and also... Um, some other things he can do out there on the court he can definitely fit my biggest concern with a guy like og ananobi is what role is he looking for why is he not happy in toronto i pulled up um an excerpt from nick's nurses i don't know if it's a memoir but a book he wrote following that championship run and in it you can see that ob og was kind of looking for a larger role he was unhappy that fred van vliet had the ball in his hands too much so if we go and bring a guy like OG here, he's not going to supplant Jul Jalen Brunson as the first option. He's not going to supplant Julius Randle as the second option. And if RJ is not in the deal, he may not even supplant him as the third option. So where is he going to get his touches? And if he's disgruntled in Toronto, I see him being similarly disgruntled here with the New York Knicks. So it would then put us in a situation where we may not be able to extend him because he wants a larger role. So me personally, I think that is why OG may not be the best fit here with the new york knicks yeah hey shout out keys folks if you haven't seen uh the 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 stream that keys did on og it was brilliant and i don't think anybody did that excerpt but like keys and one of the things that keys talked about is that og went to the coach nurse and said to him that uh you know he keeps running over to me van vliet for the ball and he said well that's what point guards do mm -hmm. and then he sees him a day or so later 
and he just walks right by him. And as he's walking by him, he goes, he's still doing it. Yo, that's an attitude. Is that what you want to bring here? And like he's just said, you got, you know, I don't know if there are three guys in the league, one team in this league that have the usage of three guys, meaning uh, RJ, Randall, and Brunson. There, I don't think there's any team that have three players with the usage as high as them. So he'd be, he'd be totally unhappy. If he's unhappy in Toronto uh, and clutching his ear, uh, he'll be getting the hell out of here in a year and a half. And we talked about, uh, you know, especially a guy that's leading the league in steals, leading the league in deflections, you know, his prototype 6'8", can hit the three. There'll be a lot of people vying for him. So do we really want to get into a bidding war? No, man. Either sign and trade or forget the deal, man. Yep. And another player that's been rumored to the Knicks that fills a similar role would be Sadiq Bay, which I think is a nice option for the Knicks to pivot to because one, I think he'll be cheaper. And also, I think he won't need the ball in his hands as much or isn't looking for as large of a role as a guy like OG and an OB. So how would you feel about Sadiq Bay potentially being uh, brought to the New York Knicks via trade? A whole lot better than than OG. I think that uh, Sadiq is a lot better. Sometimes when you play on a team, especially the Detroit teams of the last few years, you know you can't show your real game. So I think he's a whole lot better. You know, and folks, so we just go from eighteen million and stuff like that now to two point nine this year, four point five, and then qualifying what? Yo, look at this. You know, this is you know uh, OG obviously is a very good player, but it has to be about uh, uh, value. And uh, he's younger, two years younger, Sadiq. Villanova tough, bringing, you know, join, you know, coming back with uh, Jalen. I'd love Sadiq on this team, personally. And also, and I think be a restricted free agent, too. So you, there's some certainty in bringing him back because then at least you can match any offer he gets in the free agency. Exactly. And, but you have a few years to see his chemistry, you see his growth. You know, he has that wingspan, you know. Yeah. So I, I definitely uh, think. You know, we could watch him grow before our eyes and he's in the right timeline age wise. And he, you know, so, yeah, I would definitely. And the cost would be minimal compared to what we'd have to give up for OG. And what also, we Go have ahead. a good relationship with Detroit in the past yeah. of, of of doing deals with them. So I think that's, there's the, only more, we, that's the only team we trade with at this point. <laughs> <is Detroit. laughs> I know. So there is a synergy there, man. All right, so I'm putting a poll in the chat. I just wanted to know who you guys think we should go after, whether it should be OG Ananobi or Sadiq Bey. So I'll put that poll in the chat. And I also have their stats for this season up as well, so you guys can review that while you make your decision. Yeah, you so, yeah. Right now, OG has the edge in points per game, 16.9 compared to 15. We've got OG with the uh, with the edge in uh, rebounds per game as well, 5.5 to 4.6. OG, again, has the edge in assists per game, 2 to 1.6. Turnover, Sadiq has the bay. Uh, Sadiq has the bay. <laughs> Sadiq has the edge. <laughs> Sadiq has in the turnovers. bay. <laughs> <laughs> in turnovers, 1.1 to 2.2. Uh, steals is really where OG, st- um, OG shines at 2.1 steals per game. But of course, Sadiq is no slouch as well. He averages one still a game. Uh, field goal percentage, OG has the edge in both field goal and three point percentage. Uh, Sadiq Bay has the edge in free throws. And uh, minutes per game, OG is leading there with 40 or 35.8 minutes. Six more per minutes, game, yeah. Compared to Sadiq at 28.9. Uh, Sadiq has also played more games. Once again, OG is out as of right now due to an injury and uh, og also has the much better defensive rating at 113 to 120. and that could be a little misleading because of siakam and the other guys surrounding him versus yeah. the guys that are surrounding sadiq yes sadiq, yeah, sadiq is in a struggle on a struggling team right now if the season ended today the the pistons would be in line for the second overall pick so that shows you how much of a struggle they've had this season yeah, but, uh, you know, if you look at it and you extrapolate, you give six more minutes to Sadiq, they'll probably have the same numbers as OG. Yeah, it looks uh, like on the points, of, rebounds, and, uh, and assists at least. Yeah, it looks like one of uh, Sadiq's family members pulled up to kind of defend him as well, uh, Cedric Bay. Salute. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs>
What are the odds, right? Uh, Cedric Bay pulls up while we're talking about Sadiq Bay. Yeah. So I think OG is the better player, but uh, Sadiq uh, Bay might be the better fit if you include what it would cost for us to acquire him. Yeah. And uh, and as the great Ron Cleveland says, your greatest availability uh, ability is your availability. OG's out with a wrist injury, and that's after he was out with an ankle injury, which was out after he had, you know, this guy literally from eye orbitable, you know, uh, his stock. He was drafted. He was talked about on the same lay level as Jason Tatum. He was in the Jason Tatum draft, folks, but he blew out his uh, his ACL at Indiana. That's why he dropped in the in the draft. So, but he's you know very Kyrie like that. Ever since college, he's he's continually injured. Uh, uh, Jess goes to Luke. He says OG is way better on defense, and Sadiq's field goal percentage is pretty bad. So yeah, field goal percentage is an issue. But remember, again, Sadiq Bay is playing on a bad team, and I think a lot of nights they're out there just chucking up shots. So I think if you put Sadiq Bay in a more controlled environment and give him a system where he can fit in and you know, find his shots that way as opposed to trying to you know go one-on-one -on -one, go iso and try to create for himself i think you'll definitely see a, an increase in his uh, field goal deficiency yeah for some reason my gut's telling me either brunson or iq will make him a little bit look a lot better than killian hayes <laughs> yeah that's a fact and Jaden ivy that guy has all the speed in the world but he's a nightmare as a point guard mm-hmm uh, also, we've got 206 in chat, but we've only got 92 likes. Try to get to that 100 like Please. threshold. Do us a solid. Smash that like button. Uh, help us get us to that 100 uh, threshold. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, and please, if you have subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't, please, as we always talk about, it's the one-stop shop for all Nick's news, rumors, and analysis. If you, you know, shout out to the replay gang. If you can't catch it live, we love chopping it up. We had a lot of comments last week that uh, Keith and I answered. So thank you so much. Keep those coming. Um, and as always, uh, you know, please turn on that all remind the bell so you don't miss out on any of the wonderful content. And uh, shout out to the best mods on the planet. We appreciate all you do. Yep. Thank you guys for all the hard work. We really appreciate it. You guys hold it down as mods and make sure we don't have anybody bombing the chat and helping it be a solid environment for everybody to tune in and participate. So we really do appreciate all the support. Thanks. And here we have the on off court stats for uh, the guys that we mentioned uh, today and also Alex Caruso. So you can see OG and Anobi, Sadiq Bey and Alex Caruso, the teams, their teams play better with them out there on the court. But you see the guys uh, that were trying to target um, and trade Obi Toppin for him, Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt. Teams are much, their team is much better with them on the bench as opposed <laughs> to them on the court. Yeah, so give up Obi, give up a draft choice and everything for two guys that have a proven record that teams better when they don't play. Uh, yeah, crazy. you just don't do that, man. Not one bit. And also we have uh, the notification on the bottom just to let you guys know what's good and what's bad. Yeah, so red means you know the team is better when the player's off the court. So, yeah, so what are we going against guys that just don't have a good record when they're on the court? That's why people go after IQ because he has the green. His, you know, he's better when the team plays better when, you know, plays.